The average trade paperback sells for $15.95. The standard deviation for these prices is $1.05. Form an interval that captures 88.9% of all trade paperback prices. When reading any statistics problem, we have to first infer what technique should be used to solve the problem. That often is quite difficult. So we want to approach it by looking at the problem almost as a detective and looking for clues. So for example, I can see they gave me a mean here, right? So they give me the mean. They gave me a standard deviation. So I might want to start to think about, so far in my class, what problems have given me both a mean and a standard deviation. Well, they'd have to be somewhere after the point where we learned mean and standard deviation, because we would have learned those pieces separately. So the fact that they're giving both of those things in one problem, and they're the given information, they don't actually directly relate to the calculation we have to do. In other words, we can use them in the calculation, but they're not, our problem is not about the mean and standard deviation, right? So because of that, it must be something towards the latter stages of what we learned thus far. So I then might think of something like, okay, z-scores, right? Z-scores certainly use a mean and standard deviation, but this problem is asking us to form an interval. And z-scores are not intervals, right? They're single values, right? So it's not that type of problem then. There's no indication that we should whip out a z-score formula. So what other topics used a mean and standard deviation but asked us to use those quantities related to an interval? Well, there's Chebyshev's theorem, and then there was the empirical rule. But the empirical rule required us to know that the data had a normal distribution, or a bell-shaped distribution, or a symmetric and mound-shaped distribution, right? So they would have used some language like that. I don't see anything in the problem related to that, and we can't make those assumptions on our own. So I'm going to eliminate the empirical rule. So that leaves me just with Chebyshev's theorem. It's the only idea that comes to mind that involves an interval and uses a mean and standard deviation, and then also talks about capturing a certain percentage, right? And in fact, I might remember from our discussion in class that this was a common percentage that's discussed when discussing Chebyshev's theorem. So all of these clues lead me to think, hmm, I can use Chebyshev's theorem to solve this problem. Now, if you remember, that's when we have k equal to 3. So you might have that memorized, right? If not, you have to use algebra to solve for that value. And that's fairly difficult. I'd probably prefer that my students did a little trial and error since this is not an algebra class. So in other words, if you check to see if k is the right answer, you would pull out the Chebyshev's theorem formula from your formula card. And you'd remember that k goes in the denominator here, right? And then it's multiplied by 100% to convert it into a percent. So let's see if 3 would indeed work here. k squared would be 3 squared, or 9, times 100%. And that will give you 1 minus 1 ninth times 100%. And whether you use your calculator or you do it in your head, you know, 1 can be written as 9 ninths, so 9 ninths minus 1 ninth is 8 ninths, and you can check that in your calculator if you need to. And you might know that a fraction like 8 over 9 is just the decimal 0.888 repeating. In other words, if you have something over 9 like this, the something on top just repeats forever. So like 3 ninths would be 0.33333, 2 ninths would be 0.22222, 1 ninth would be 0.11111, so on and so forth. So in other words, if you rounded this off after multiplying by 100, let's first multiply by 100. If you multiply that times 100%, of course you get 88.8 .8 repeating percent, or in other words, if you round, 88.9%. So it does seem to be the case that k is equal to 3. All right, so hopefully you would have remembered that, or you could have just used trial and error to get something close to it, or as a last resort, you could solve an equation to solve for it. In other words, you could set this equal to 88.9% in the beginning, and then you could solve for k. That, of course, would be a little bit more work but it's still doable. Okay, so notice the goal here was find k, right? Find k. Very much the same goal as when you're working with the Chebyshev's theorem in its traditional problem type. The only difference is here, we're not looking at an interval and determining what k was. We're going to form the interval after determining what k should be. So we know that k should be 3 because we did a little trial and error, or we took a guess there and, and determined that k is 3 here if we want to capture 88.9% of the data. But now we need to construct the interval. So how do you construct the interval? Well, to do that, we're simply going to say the interval should be of the following form. 
the mean minus k standard deviations, the mean plus k standard deviations. So that's our interval. And we have all these items. We have the mean, it's $15.95. We know that k is 3. The standard deviation here is $1.05. So 1595 plus 3 times $1.05. And 3 times $1.05 is $3.15. So I'm just going to save us a little time with the calculator by writing that in. Usually I like to work it out on the calculator for students because I don't want them to think they have to do any of this arithmetic in their head. But whatever, there it is. You know you could always pull your calculator out to do that. If I take $3 from 15, I'll have $12. If I take 15 cents from 95 cents, I have 80 cents. So 1280 is the first number in our interval. All right, and then likewise, if I add 15 cents to 95 cents, I'll get $1.10. And if I add 3 to 15, I get 18. So 18 and $1.10 is 19.10. Again, you could have simply done that with your calculator though, right? You could have simply said 15.95 minus 315. And then you could have done the same calculation, this time changing the negative to a plus, and got $19.10. All right, so what we're saying here is that the interval from $12.80 to $19.10 captures at least 88.9% of all trade paperback prices. So I want to make a special note here that there's a typo in my problem, and I could have re-recorded this video, but I think it's worth pointing out here that there's an error, and that would actually help you remember that I'm missing a piece of terminology here. And this is my fault. I was a little sloppy when I wrote the problem. But that's a good thing because now we'll learn from my mistake, right? This little place right here should have the phrase at least, because that's what Chebyshev's theorem uses. In other words, it gives you a lower bound for what's inside an interval. It gives you a minimum. It does not give you an approximate answer. So it would have been also another clue when we read the problem to say, oh, that's Chebyshev's theorem because it uses that phrase at least, or it uses the phrase minimum percent, right? So it should have said, form an interval that captures at least 88.9% of all trade paperback prices. So when we write our final answer here, I want to say that $12.80 to $19.10 captures at least 88.9% of all trade paperback prices. And again, it's important that we have that phrase, at least. So I left it out in the wording of my original problem, but that was an error on my part.